Thank you so much for coming to speak to us today. Could you just tell us in a couple of sentences who you are and, and what you do as a researcher, what your um, research is about? Yeah, uh, my name is Natalia Calanzani. I'm a research fellow at the University of Edinburgh. And I currently work on a feasibility study trying to increase uptake of bowel cancer screening. So that involves a database analysis, but we're still waiting for our data set and uh, collecting data in primary care. Great. Can I ask, what are your strategies for file management, file naming, versioning, just generally organizing data? And how does that help you and your collabor collaborators make sense of the collected data and leave an audit trail for yourselves? So we, we have uh, a server here at the university where we store uh, every file from the project. And uh, only the researchers who have, been re who have received ethical approval to check those files, they can access those. And uh, we, we name the files based on the version, their versions and the dates they were created. And we try to use underscores instead of spaces because we know that depending on the system you're using, if you have spaces, you ha might have problems. Uh, and this is important for us to be consistent, but also so we make sure we are using the files which have been approved by ethics because you end up having so many different versions. So it's, it's, it's good for you to keep track of what exactly you're using. And uh, I have to admit, though, that uh, we could improve because when a file becomes obsolete, we're still keeping those there. So it's quite clut cluttered at the moment, so we could improve on that. Do you rely on institutional storage and backup systems in the course of your research? And how do you know your data are being kept secure? Uh, yes. So if you're dealing with patient data and identifiable information, it's very likely that you're, it's going to be mandatory for you to write forms and application, lots of applications explaining how data are kept secure. And here at the university, Information Services has helped us to develop those forms and they have explained to us how our data are stored and how the backup systems worked. And they helped us develop a diagram showing how we access data and how the data are protected. So I think we, we can, uh, we're quite certain that everything is well kept and protected. And what are the, some of the methods available to you to protect patient confidentiality? So we, for the, for the patient uh, databases, uh, we, we are not allowed to, like I had mentioned, we are not allowed to publish anything for less than, less than five cases, let's say like that. If you have less than five cases of a rare condition or something, you're not supposed to report that. And of course, the, we're not allowed to copy these data sets to our own computers. They all stay secured in the server, server. We don't copy them to USB sticks as well, for example, and that avoids a lot of issues. And only people who have been uh, received uh, approval to access these data sets, they access this data. In terms of the, the patient uh, forms that we have, which collect data in primary care practices, uh, these are kept locked in, uh, in cabinets in our, in our offices. Well, thank you very much, and good luck with your research. Thank you.